This is the Learning in Hand podcast. My name is Tony Vincent, and this is a show where I share tips, how-tos, and ideas for handhelds in teaching and learning. Episode 22, Apps for Education, recorded June 2010, happens now. Apple has sold over 100 million of their handhelds, which include iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. These devices run the iOS, which was formerly known as the iPhone operating system. This month, Apple is touting that 5 billion apps have been downloaded, which is about 50 downloads per iOS device. There's so much in the App Store, and it's growing by an average of 700 apps per day. It can be challenging for an educator to stay tuned in to the latest and greatest apps. You can search the App Store for apps that might go with your activity or unit of study. When searching, you can limit the results to free apps by clicking Power Search. Pay attention to the reviews. Unfortunately, reviewers are often not educators, so reviews and ratings might not reflect an app's true value. Be sure to pay attention to the apps at the bottom of the page listed under Customers Also Bought. I've discovered some great apps this way. Outside of the App Store, there are many helpful people who have put together various lists of apps for teaching and learning. I've bookmarked over 30 lists of educational apps on my Delicious page. Let me tell you about a few of them. There's iEar.org, where you can click a grade level or choose a subject under lockers. Some of the reviews have videos, and all reviews are done by educators. The Recess Duty blog has a list of 99 iPod Touch apps used by a middle school teacher during the 2009-2010 school year. Macworld has an extensive app guide with various categories, including education genres. ConSense Bulletin has a very extensive listing of apps. Apps have short descriptions of their educational uses. There's a great 24-page document by Eric Sailors on Scribe.com full of apps for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch, with a focus on special education. The list is sorted by category. Kindergarten teachers at St. Mary's Episcopal School in Tennessee have a website for their potty training project. They list a few of their favorite apps and their blog has some useful videos and advice. My list of lists continues to grow, but I want to tell you about some of the apps I learned about from Twitter. Asa posted a list to the new features added to the Long Division app. It's an app that can be used to learn and study long division. Students can solve random problems, large or small, or enter their own. You might want to check out their other apps by the developer iDev Books, including long multiplication, column subtraction, and fraction math. Irene wrote a tweet mentioning StoryKit. It's an app where users can create digital storybooks. Just combine text, a drawing or image, and record a narration or sound effect. The storybook can be shared online, and you'll get a URL for that. But the sounds won't play back on an iOS device, but sounds do work great in a desktop browser. You might notice that these Twitter posts, called tweets, contain pound ed app. This is called a hashtag. A hashtag begins with a number sign slash pound symbol and then contains a keyword. Hashtags make it easier to search and archive tweets. Educators are tagging their tweets that mention an education app with pound ed app. This way, even people who aren't registered with Twitter can go to search.twitter.com and search for pound ed app. Twapper Keeper and Twubs are sites that keep archives of all Pound Ed App Twitter posts and are full of great app suggestions. 
The developer for Faces I Make app wrote about their app, and it's all about creative craziness. Instead of drawing with a pencil or paint, you draw with stuff. You use food and objects to make a face. It's actually quite fun, and the objects can have meaning. For example, when I make a self-portrait, I include foods I like and objects that have meaning to me. Recess Duty posted a link to a 3-inch ruler for iPod Touch and iPhone called Tape Measure. It might be handy to instantly have a ruler around when you need it. She also posts a link to Numbler, Number Jumble Fun. It's a game where two players touch numbered tiles as fast as they can to reach a target sum. This is great for sharpening mental math skills. Mystery mentioned Mental Note, both free and pay versions. It's a way to combine text, photos, sketches, and audio that can be organized and even shared through email. Fred wrote about the Podcasting for Education app. It's a set of seven tutorial videos for educators who want to learn how to podcast using GarageBand. If you're not a Mac user, the app isn't for you since GarageBand is Mac-only software. Fred also tweeted the BrainPop featured movie app for iPad. While the current BrainPop.com site uses Flash and won't work on an iOS device, the free app brings one video from their educational site to the iPad. You don't get a choice in what the featured movie is, but they're all good. Tim and Moby rarely disappoint. And on the topic of iPad, Kathy tweeted a link to an article that tells about the ins and outs of iWork apps for iPad. That's Apple's suite of three apps, Pages for Word Processing, Keynote for Slideshows, and Numbers for Spreadsheets. They are $9.99 each and are pretty powerful apps, but they do have some frustrating limitations and quirks. Like you might have guessed, I'm on Twitter. And I often share apps, especially ones that happen to be on sale. Sales typically last only a day or two, so Twitter is a great place to share these timely deals. For example, one of my favorite iPod Touch apps, Sonic Picks, was offered for free April 1st. Sonic Picks is like Microsoft Photo Story, where you can narrate a slideshow of images. The end product is a movie file you can share with others. Another app that was offered for free is iCut. It's a puzzle game where players cut shapes into congruent parts. It starts out easy, but gets harder and harder. Prices for apps change periodically, so the prices you see on Twitter or on websites may be outdated, and sometimes an app might change its name or disappear from the app store entirely. An app that is free and completely awesome, and I hope never disappears from the app store, is iCell. It gives you a 3D look into an animal, plant, or bacteria cell. You can spin and zoom around the cell, tap a structure to see its name and read about it. You'll notice many of the tweets when you search for Pound Ed app are retweets. That means that the person tweeting is repeating a tweet from someone else. When someone retweets, they thought the original post was so good that it was worth repeating. Retweet posts often start with RT. I tweeted about Enterstate. It's a game where you try to tap 50 states in a minute or less. It's really hard, and I have yet to meet anyone who can do it, which makes it a good geography challenge for students. Very young readers will like Read Me Stories. You get a new talking picture book a day. You can read seven books for free during your trial, and then after that, books are 10 cents each. Please consider tweeting about apps you like for teaching and learning. Just remember to include Pound Ed App. Also, it's helpful to include a link to the app in iTunes. Do that by searching for the app in iTunes. On the app's details page, click the triangle next to the download button and choose copy link. You can paste that link into Twitter. If Twitter doesn't shrink the link for you, you might need to make it shorter by using a URL shortener service like Bitly. 
You've seen a nice sampling of apps. Thanks to everyone who shared these on Twitter and keep them coming. That's it for episode 22. For a transcript, web links, and much more about iPods, iPads, and podcasting, visit learninginhand.com. Thanks for watching.